Okay, so dear students, today we'll be talking about dyspnea. Dyspnea is the subjective sensation of breathlessness, always accompanied with dilation of nerves and cyanosis, and uses of accessory muscles of use of accessory muscles of respiration and abnormality of respiratory rhythm, depth, or rhythm. So dyspnea is a sensation of weakness and a person is like feel like a kind of uh, difficulty in breathing, right? And then there is a dilation of nares, nares, nose because this, uh, because a person at that time is trying to uh, putting effort to breathe in the air because he is feeling, he or she is feeling uh, breathlessness. So if a patient in the clinic uh, present to you, he will be how he will be describing this sensation. He will be describing the shortness of breath, or he will be telling you, I'm quickly out of breath, or cannot uh, take a breath deep, or he will be smoothing feeling in the chest, or tightness in the chest, and fatigue in the chest. So these are the <clears throat> things that the patients will be describing to you in the clinic. So the etiology of uh, dyspnea. Dyspnea can be because of a lot of causes. There can be respiratory cause, cardiac cause, toxic causes, neuropsychogenic diseases. There can be hematological disease and increase of abdominal pressure in some cases like massive ascites and pregnancy. So these all things can cause uh, dyspnea difficulty in breathing. So let's see one by one. Which kind of uh, respiratory diseases can cause dyspnea? Of course, the first one is uh, airway obstruction. So airway obstruction can definitely cause, uh, you know, difficulty in breathing. And then pulmonary diseases, thoracic, thoracic disease, and neuromuscular diseases that we will be now talking one by one. So what is respiratory dyspnea? Respiratory dyspnea is caused by abnormal ventilation and gas exchange or disorder of respiratory drive. Other reduction in the respiratory function causes hypercapnia and hypoxemia resulting from respiratory disease. So this is caused by abnormal ventilation and gas exchange. Okay, so there's a problem with this a ventilation problem in the res your respiratory tract that you are not able to you know ventilate like get in the air and then mm -hmm. inhale right. out the air so this is the res uh, problem in the respiratory tract that will cause you you know difficulty breathing so <clears throat> there are this uh, dyspnea which is caused by the respiratory problem uh, different respiratory problems. We divide them into different clinical types like inspiratory dyspnea, expiratory dyspnea, and mixed dyspnea. So we will discuss this now one by one. Inspiratory dyspnea, it's very, very clear, uh, very, very easy actually. Uh, what you will be seeing here actually, you can be seeing visible depression in substernal fossa the supracavicular fossa and intrathoracic spaces in the expiration three depression sign. So this three depression sign when you see in your patient then you can diagnose this as inspiratory dyspnea of respiratory uh, tract. Okay so what three signs are here is uh, supra clavicular fossa. So this area is a supraclavicular fossa and then uh, this one is uh, supraesternal and then this one here uh, you can see is uh, intercostal spaces that stays between the two ribs. So these three signs are like you know depression. They are depressed because uh, diaphragm is uh, because here it's pushing too much raised pressure. So to get in the like you know these can describe the hunger for the air so inspiratory dyspnea is often due to obstruction in large airway so which kind of diseases that can like you know uh, can cause the obstruction in the large airways like familiar disease acute laryngitis aspirated foreign bodies 
and central bronchogenic carcinoma. So these all diseases like you know central bronchogenic carcinoma, spirated, they all block your large airway. So when the large airway, the main airways are blocked, the air will not go in. The inspiration will not occur. So that time, that time we call this is the inspiratory dyspnea. Expiratory dyspnea is characterized with prolonged expiratory time and expiratory bronchi. So now here you see that in that case there was an inspiratory problem, but here now we can see is the time for expiration is prolonged, and there is the abnormal respiratory. Uh, sound with a bronchi okay expiratory dyspnea why this happen is due to the obstruction in the small airway or alveolar elasticity decrease so this thing happens in your small airway so what happened there due to some reasons that they are not able to like you know compress and then there is obstruction there so the air that is already in the lungs to that is not like you know it is very hard for us to like expire the air so which kind of diseases are here emphysema bronchial asthma and chronic asthmatic bronchitis miss dyspnea this kind of dyspnea is both inspiratory and expiratory so what is why this mixed dyspnea is caused by fixed obstruction in extra thoracic areas for example Neoplasm, okay. Non-pulmonary respiratory distress originate from outside of the respiratory or some non-pulmonary respiratory distress that is not in the respiratory tract, right? Mixed dyspnea is characterized with increased respiration, respiratory rate, and shallow breathing. So you see here is both the characteristics at the same time. So why it happens is this is often due to deficient gas exchange resulting from decreased respiratory area. Okay, so for example, you got a severe pneumonia or miliary tuberculosis or interstitial lung diseases or ARDS. Right, in these diseases, this kind of pattern you will see both inspiratory and expiratory disease. Now we will go to other category. There is one category is that cardiac dyspnea. We have finished talking on the respiratory. So well, now let's see the cardiac dyspnea. Dyspnea result from left or right heart failure. Okay. So cardiac dyspnea, the main cause of dyspnea resulting from left heart failure or pulmonary venous pleonemia and decreased alveolar elasticity. So what happened? Dyspnea is like here you see is the primary symptom of the left heart failure. So cardiac failure, how this can stimulate and breathing and dyspnea. So pulmonary conjunction, what they do is reduce lung compliance and can also obstruct the small air. Okay. In addition, during exercise or reduced cardiac output, they limit oxygen supply to oxygen skeletal muscle, causing early lactic acidemia and further stimulating breathing via the central chemoreceptor. So by this mechanism, like you know, the demand for you know oxygen increase. So we feel that we get the free breathe uh, feeling of breathlessness. So left heart failure, the basic basal diseases are coronary heart disease, hypertensive heart disease, rheumatic heart disease. Or congenital heart disease. So left heart failure again you see mechanism stiff alveoli what they do decrease the vital capacity and more work is needed to overcome elastic because the higher then the higher alveolar pressure stimulate respiratory center through stretch receptor and high pulmonary circulation pressure stimulate respiratory centers. What will be a uh, clinical presentation of this patient is exhausted dyspnea and then there will be position related dyspnea like orthopnea or proximal nocturnal dyspnea. So like what is exhausted dyspnea? Difficulty in breathing when the patient take part in activity. 
during exercise impel more blood into pulmonary circulation and more oxygen is needed for body demand especially the heart so that's why the patient uh, feel like you know feeling of breathlessness feeling of like you know respiratory hunger okay next mechanism is uh, next thing is position related orthopnea the breathlessness take place when the patient is lying down but the dyspnea is relieved by sitting up it is the characteristic of uh, left heart failure because when the patient um, is in the like you know relief sitting up then you use some extra uh, extra respiratory muscles to overcome this uh, breathing difficulty so that's why this dyspnea is uh, orthopnea get better with position change and then another classification is here is proxismal nocturnal dyspnea it is the breathlessness that wakes up the patient from the sleep but often obtained relief by sitting up for a period of time so this dyspnea is given a name when the patient is sleeping he will wake up okay from the sleep and then this one again the same mechanism that it will relieve by sitting up it is also a symptom of cardiac disease so what you will be seeing in the lung in the moist crackle and bronchi in both lungs so what are the reason that uh, the patient feel better so fine position for sleep impel more blood into pulmonary circulation and decrease vital capacity okay so vagus stimulation it also cause coronary artery constriction and bronchial spasm so that's why the patient get like you know feeling of breathlessness so this two mechanism at the same time that can be when the patient sits and he relieve from get relief from this patient this kind of symptom of breathlessness so this is very important new york new york heart association classification you should be knowing how to classify this uh, dyspnea class 1 no limitation ordinary physical activity like you do some normal physical activities you will be not uh, having any kind of you know feeling of chest tightness or breathlessness and class 2 slight limitation of physical activity like it's a slight limitation when you do the uh, physical examination physical activities there is a you know slight breathlessness right and then in the class 3 mark limitation of physical activity like with little activity you will feel like you know um feel like breathlessness and then class 4 uh, in this you have inability to carry any physical activity so what are the releasing factors here you can use diuretics uh, digitalis vasodilator or change the position okay so these all like you know this digitalis increase your cardiac output diuretics removes you know extra um fluid from the body and uh, and then you know overload on the cardiac system is decreased right and the vasodilators increase the vis vessel size and again may be helpful in uh, relieving this fat problem so right heart failure now we will talk so acute core pulmonary caused by pulmonary embolism or chronic core pulmonary caused by chronic obstructive pulmonary disease okay mechanism how in the right heart failure what happen the pressure of the right atria and superior vena cava is the natural stimulus for the respiratory center okay hypoxemia and accumulation of the acid metabolite is stimulate also stimulate to the respiratory center so the restriction of the respiratory movement caused by enlargement of liver ascites and pleural effusion so this three kind of problems um, they can all like you know stimulate your respiratory center and increase the demand of you know uh, respiration right so they solve three causes here there can be also poisoning dyspnea so metabolic disease drug poisoning and chemicals like basal disease in the poison poisoning dyspnea 
So poisoning is a mechanism, how it works, the accumulation of acid metabolites to stimulate respiratory centers, and some drugs cause dyspnea by inhibiting respiratory system or changing the respiratory rhythm, okay? And certain chemicals like carbon monoxide, cyanide poisoning cause dyspnea by inducing anoxia. So these three mechanisms, like either the acid metabolites, will stimulate your respiratory center or some drugs that inhibit the respiratory system centers directly or some chemicals like they cause dyspnea by inducing uh, dyspnea by inducing anoxia. So poisoning dyspnea. Dyspnea may be one of the clinical manifestation of metabolic acidosis. Okay. In metabolic acidosis what happened? Uremia and diabetic acidosis the acid metabolites, like as we have already discussed, stimulate the respiratory system, prolong and deepen the regular uh, respiration. Of course, small respiration, and it will also cause snoring. And poisoning dyspnea, the overdose of morphine or phenobarbital can inhibit the respiratory system, cause uh, slow and causing the slower respiration or Chinese stroke respiration. And neuropsychogenic uh, psychic uh, dyspnea is characterized with deep and slow breathing, often accompanied with abnormal breathing rhythm. Okay, and then neuropathic dyspnea affects the normal function of respiratory center. And some familiar diseases in severe CNS diseases, uh, this thing happens is like cerebral abscess, brain trauma, or brain neoplasm. So in these cases, uh, this kind of uh, respiratory patterns can be seen. So another another pattern is neuropsychic dyspnea. Psychogenic dyspnea is usually characterized with fast and shallow breathing, commonly seen in steric patients. So this uh, neuropsychic dyspnea characteristic is different from the previous one. Then there can be hematologic dyspnea, the decrease of oxygen carrying capacity, oxygen content develops uh, abnormal respiration, increase heart rate, such as in severe uh, anemia, carbon monoxide, or you can get some self, uh, self hemoglobinemia or methemoglobinemia. So in these cases, what happens? Then the oxygen carrying capacity is decreased. So tissues uh, get uh, deprived of oxygen, so uh, you also feel the there is a feeling of breathlessness in these cases also. And then again, hypotension can also stimulate your respiratory centers uh, when the patient suffer from shock. Accompanying system uh, symptoms, uh, proximal dyspnea with ronchi. So some here, some characteristic uh, symptoms you will see. If you see Dyspnea with bronchi. It is present in bronchial asthma and cardiac asthma. If proxismal severe respiratory dyspnea is often seen in acute larynx edema, spontaneous pneumothorax, and massive pulmonary embolism. If you see the dyspnea with uh, chest pain, it is frequently observed in lower pneumonia, pulmonary infarction, or spontaneous pneumothorax or acute exudative pleurisity, acute myocardial infarction, bronchial carcinoma. So if you get a dyspnea that is accompanied with the chest pain, so you should be suspecting these, uh, these diseases. And if the dyspnea is accompanied with fever, it is no, commonly noted in pneumonia, lung abscess and pulmonary tuberculosis, pleurisy and acute pericarditis and nervous system diseases. And dyspnea with cough and pluralant sputum, it is often present in chronic bronchitis, obstructive pulmonary emphysema with infection, and pluralant pneumonia and lung abscess. And dyspnea with large amount of foamy sputum, so it is very characteristic of uh, acute left ventricular heart failure or organophosphate poisoning. Dyspnea with coma, which is common in cerebral hemorrhage, anemia with shock, uremia, diabetic ketosis, and acute poisoning. 
So what the points of inquisition, like this, what we have to ask, we have to ask like what are the precipitating factors of dyspnea, for example, underlying diseases, history, drug history, occupation history, right? And onset of breathing, like how uh, this onset of breathing, like how, when it happens, when happened, how happened, right? And this uh, relationship with the position, whether this kind of dyspnea is uh, getting uh, better with the position or not or associated symptoms with this disease. So this points, uh, when you ask your patient, they will help you in more, you know, easily to reach your diagnosis. Thanks.